Hello my friends, welcome back. I just wanted to recap all of the books that I read in the month of August since now it is September. Um, that means that summer is on its way out, but we do still have three weeks of summer left, okay? So let's enjoy our three weeks of summer. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, I read a lot, I DNF'd a lot, and I don't remember a lot. <laughs> so hopefully this goes well. Okay, I'm just gonna go through my stack of physical books first, and then I will go through the ones that I listen to on audio. So I did try The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. I got like, I think it was three minutes into the audiobook, um, and there was just so much saturation of like, mediums and tarot cards and readings and it was just there was so much in that short amount of time that I was like is, if this is how the book is gonna go I don't think I want to continue so DNFing going to unhaul the two books that I have in this series they will go to the CF book sale then I tried The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie this one I didn't think that I would love but because of the hype and the buzz and also because I had found it at the dollar store for like a dollar um, I thought why not try it why not try it so I didn't know anything about it and I didn't get very far into it when I DNF'd it because of language I think I read Binti by Nettie Okorafor this one I've heard a lot about since it was released there have been many more in this series I honestly didn't realize how teeny this book was I thought it was a uh, like a standard size book you know but um, it's not it's super tiny it's a it's it's good it's a little too short to really be memorable for me um, it was sci-fi it's about like there are other planets and our main girl Binti she gets uh, she's one of the first people, there are different people from different planets, and she was the first one from her planet to be accepted into a university that was highly regarded on another planet. Um, but yeah, then some political stuff happens. Uh, so yeah, uh, it, was, it was good, it's just not overly memorable. The next book I read was The Last Sin Eater by Francine Rivers. This one I read because Karina over at What Brings Karina Joy she had um, thrown it out on her channel that she was going to be reading this um, in August and she invited everyone to read along with her. So I found this audiobook and I read it. And to me, this felt very out of the box for Francine Rivers. This was like weirdly Frank Reddy vibes. I feel like maybe some Ted Decker. I don't know. There's some overlap there. Um, yeah, because it, it's it's oh I don't know. It's kind of like a oh it's really hard to explain because in this town there's been one person who has been labeled the sin eater. So it's a little bit I think like a priest, but in a more severe, intense way um, where when you sin you would go to the sin eater and you would tell him your sin and he would absolve you of it and he would take it but there's n not not all is what it seems with the sin eater so yeah it was interesting I won't ever read it reread it and I don't know that I would really recommend it because there's nothing wrong with it it just I don't know I don't know I reread Fervent by Priscilla Shire. She is one of my favorite people ever. Um, I really love all of her content that she has out in books and in studies and on YouTube and all the all the all the things. Um, this is a woman's battle plan for serious, specific, and strategic prayer. Uh, this is a book I will reread over and over and over again. This is only my second time through, but I mean I could pick it up again right now, and I it would just be really really good. I just highly recommend this one. If you haven't read this one yet, go read it. Then I read My Grandmother Sends Her Regards and Apologizes by Frederick Bachman. Bachman. This also has a different title in the States, I believe. Um, Frederick Bachman is the Swedish author? I don't remember. 
but anyway, all of his works are translated into English, and for some reason the British and American titles are different once again. I don't really understand why that is. If somebody out there understands why British and American titles are sometimes different, let me know. I'm so curious why that is. This one is basically this little girl's experience with grief. So it does give me a Monster Calls vibes because there is this whole like magical sort of imaginary sort of element into it. Um, and yeah, it's about her and her grandmother um, and the her experience with her grandmother. I'll just say that. So um, yeah, this is, I, I, I liked it. Didn't love it, but I liked it. I just finished today. The Wonderland Trials by Sarah Ella. Um, I saw that Celestria was reading this one and then I messaged her and I was like, oh, I just got this one from the library. And then I was just gonna see if I could catch up to her or whatever. Um, but I opened the like the first couple pages and I was like, no, the first page. I was like, this is first person present tense. I'm out, I'm out. I do not like first person present tense, so. Uh, I did have to find the audiobook, but it did come at the last minute, so I just got it done. This is an Alice in Wonderland retelling. I would say this is um, a mix between The Looking Glass Wars, which is also an Alice in Wonderland retelling, but also Caraval. Um, a combination of those two series is this book, but I think the other ones did it better. This one was fine, it was good, but I my mind wandered a lot and then I brought myself back and then wandered and then, you know, it was one of those experiences, but overall, I mean, it was fine, I think. But yeah, I mean, it was good. I, I don't know, it was good. It was good, guys. If you like Alice in Wonderland and you like any of the other books that I just mentioned, like um, Carval or The Looking Glass Wars, uh, check out that book. The next book, guys, five star, five star, five star. The Oath of, not the, there's no the there, Oath of the Brotherhood by Carla Loriano. Loriano? Yeah, Loriano. Um, this is the first book of the Song of Shira. I think they say Shira. Um, I actually read books one and two in this series because they were both phenomenal and I really really love it and it's very medieval um, fantasy but it's written by a Christian author and there's def some definite heavy Christian themes throughout this whole book um, I love this book this I if I can ever get my hands on this one it will go on my favorite shelf because this is a good one it's a good one then I got to the Dreamkeeper Saga. This is the Dragon and the Stone. I do think this this cover design is stunning. It's absolutely stunning. But I do think uh, they should have put more focus on the title of the book, not so much the title of the series. Um, but anyway, this is one that was sent to me by Crossway Books, and I also gave this one a five star. Or was it four and a half? It was really, really good. Um, it's middle grade, it's fantasy, it has a lot of vibes for me of Aragon, if anyone's read that, and also some like Wrinkle in Time and also some Never After, you know, a little bit of that kind of influence sprinkled into this book. I really liked it. This young girl, she finds a dragon type creature, but it's not a normal dragon if you will. She gets brought her and actually the bully in in school they both get brought into the this imaginary magical world with dragons and other creatures and stuff so uh, yeah I like this one and I will definitely be jumping into the second book right away the last one I have for physical books is another um, Agatha Christie this one is again one of okay this is surprising because this is one of my favorite Agatha Christie's now. However, the surprising part is it's a Tommy and Tuppence book. And I, if you don't know, I haven't really loved Tommy and Tuppence books so far. I mean, I really like their stories, but them as a couple I'm not really into. But this book I liked. 
I liked this book quite a lot. Um, this is probably one of the Agatha Christie's that will be highly ranked on, on my list and I would probably reread it. I liked One thing I will say about this one is, so, uh, Tommy and Tuppence go to Tommy's mom's place. She lives in a nursing home and so they go to visit his mom and one of the ladies, one of the other residences that they met, she is missing. And the people at the home are just like, yeah, somebody came to get her. Not really any information. She just is kind of gone. Um, and then so that doesn't sit well with Tuppence. So she figures things out. Now to move on to audiobooks. I read A Hobbit, A Wardrobe, and A Great War by Joseph LeConte. This one was an interesting experience. So I knew it was going to be a non-fiction. I knew that right out of the gate. And I knew it was going to be about J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis friendship. Um, and I knew that those two men were friends and colleagues and stuff in the writing world of their day. But I didn't understand to what extent their friendship went. Um, they were they were close and it's really cool to hear like um, how each other, how they influenced each other um, in their writing, in their like spiritual life, in their walk with God and stuff. There was also a third man that he mentioned a bunch of times um, that was kind of also influential in that group, but I don't remember what his name was. It also has to do with them bonding through their experience with the, the Great War. Um, and there was a lot of like factual talk in this book it almost read if, if this makes sense I'm gonna say it kind of read like an interesting textbook because there was like a ton of facts and like dates and like things that were happening so while I wasn't really engaged in the war element of this whole experience it was very interesting just to see how uh, Tolkien and Lewis how they responded to the war and how they like became friends and how their Christian beliefs were impacted through serving in the war and then having to come back to regular life and pursue writing and stuff. Uh, it was very interesting. It's very interesting. I gave that one a four and a half star so I really like that one. I tried Cleaning Up Your Mental Mess by Caroline Leaf. I had heard quite a while ago, I had heard of Caroline Leaf. She, I believe, is a Christian. Um, she is a neurological scientist, is that how you say it? And she has a lot of knowledge and research on all things neurological. And so um, having Having a person like that who knows the science, scientific aspect as well as a faith in God, um, it's it's an interesting combination to then uh, reflect on like things like depression or anxiety or PTSD or you know things that are very psychological based. Um, however, I was disappointed in this book. I did DNF it a third of the way through because it just felt like it was like promotional material for her app and there was like a ton of statistics that they did this study and then these numbers and then they did this study and then these numbers and then it was it was it was too much for me I was not engaged in any way for this book so I do not fit then I read Deadfall but the Quantico Files book 2 by Nancy Mel um, this one I, I said it had a five star start but it couldn't maintain that level of interest and and creative storytelling and so I ended up as a three and a half which I was disappointed about because the the beginning of the book really had me um, so yeah it's it just follows uh, who's our BAU Alex I think her name is Alex Donovan she is uh, FBI BAU kind of thing and they're after a killer who is targeting FBI agents. The next book that I read was The Sea Fairies by L. Frank Baum. Um, I think this one is a classic. Let me check the date. He wrote The Wizard of Oz, so 
in that time frame. I don't like how Goodreads, when they put dates in the book profile, it's the date of that specific book's published date. It's not when that material was originally written. So it says 2012, but that was just the issue that I, you know, had selected. Um, so it definitely was written in 2012. Anyway, I gave this one a four star. This was a really cute classic fairy tale. It was, it was very fairy-ish, pirate-y, captain, ship, mermaids, you know, all those things. It was very fun. Um, so yeah, I liked that one. I tried Heirlooms by Sandra Bird. I DNF'd it at 17%. It is a contemporary, so right off the bat, not my genre, but I'd heard so many great things about it, so I wanted to give it a shot, but it was very heavy on, the topics rested very heavily on um, a woman's desire for motherhood, and that just hit a bit too close to home, so I couldn't really pursue reading it. The next one I read is I Survived the Shark Attacks of 1916. This is book two in the I Survived series by Lauren Tarshish. 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 Uh, this one I gave a 3.75. I wish there had been more like shark scenes, but it was more um, in the story we follow this kid and his uncle or his grandpa. I think his uncle. Um, and it was more about talking about sharks than it was about like interacting with them. The next book I read was Chasing Slow, Courage to Journey Off the Beaten Path by Erin Lochner. I gave this one a two star and the general reason why I gave this one a two star was because there was very little scripture or faith base. It was, it was a Christian fiction, it's labeled Christian fiction, but it's all just like nice phrases and like good good concepts and like good things to do with your life and good ways to like have a slower paced life but not really Christ-based do you know what I mean um, so while a lot of the concepts great I just wish there had been a lot more Christ influence through the book and like shown in the book there yeah that was why I gave it such a low rating was because it's it's missing the truth right I think I think she may have mentioned the Bible a couple of times and I think she even like just randomly quoted a verse but in a way that wasn't like discussing the verse it was just like this is my thought this is a verse that sounds good with it you know it was kind of like that so yeah, I DNF'd The Hollow of Fear, which is book three in the Lady Sherlock series. I DNF'd it a third of the way through just because it ended up dragging and I couldn't hold my attention and I was just getting bored. So I was just like, I'm out. The next book was Come Back to Me. This is book one in the Waters of Time by Jodi Headland. This one I actually thought was like super similar to Waterfall by Lisa Tonbergren. Um, this one would have been a little bit more geared for like more mature audience because there was a the romance was heavier than in waterfall in waterfall i feel like you could maybe even have like teenagers maybe i don't really remember content but um but this one i don't know i don't know it told the line a bit much for me for a christian fiction um but what is it about it is about a woman modern day woman from the city and she gets kind of again I don't know how to say this in a more eloquent way but she gets sucked in um, to time travel and she time travels and she's in the middle ages so yeah I really love that kind of concept I really really love it I just wish Christian books had more Christ in them you know what I mean like, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I DNF'd Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I know my friend Tiffany over at Beautiful Minutia, she was loving this series this summer. I really wanted to love it too, Tiffany, um, but I just couldn't get into it. I DNF'd it like at 7%, so right right in the beginning. I just couldn't get into it. It didn't, it didn't grab me, so I don't know. 
If any of you guys can convince me to try it again, I might, but otherwise, that's going to be a DNF. So, these are the books that I read or tried in the month of August, and I got a lot in, and I was really happy for that. I will say that I severely failed in three of my buddy reads that I was doing, and so I need to shout out these amazing ladies because they have had immense patience with me and I love them so much. So Stacy, I'm so sorry that I have not been able to prioritize the Iron Lands. I've been really enjoying what I have been reading, so I really want to get right into it. And this is a book I'm reading physically, so it does take me a little bit longer, but that's no excuse. So I need to get into it. Melanie, I am so sorry that I haven't been able to get into Illusion until recently when I got the audiobook. Now I can get into it um, at a pretty good clip, so we should be able to finish that one up pretty quick, I think. Um, so I'm sorry that I hadn't been able to go a little faster with you, but thank you for waiting for me. And then Celestria, thank you so much for reading The Silmarillion with me. It's been it's been an interesting ride, you know, because that's a dense book, The Silmarillion, wow, um, by J.R. Tolkien. I, I told her the other day, I was like, I'm gonna have to reread this book, and she's like, what, reread it? No. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. But yeah, thank you so much for being patient with me as well, Celestria. I really appreciate it, and I feel terrible to all of you ladies. Thank you so much for giving me grace. I I cannot thank you enough. I love you guys. So anyways, thank you all for listening to the books that I read or tried in the month of August. Let me know if you have read any of them or what your thoughts have been on them. And yeah, I guess we'll just jump right into September and keep on reading. So I guess have a lovely day. I will see you in the next video. Bye.